everyone! Today we're going to see if we can actually connect this siren to a stereo and control what is being played. Right now all we have is access to two wires. Only power, no control. Yeah, but still, can we control it? We should check if it's inside just to be sure if the wires and buttons are not hiding somewhere there. Before we disassemble it to particles, this model is SYR03Y, manufactured by someone who obviously prefers to stay anonymous. It has six different tracks that can reach up to rock concert sound levels, about 125 decibels. It is powered by 12 VDC, 20 watts. If you want to check those sound tracks, follow this link. Why would someone like to disassemble a siren anyway? Why just not to use some speakers? Well, maybe you have some sirens lying at home. Maybe you want to build your own house alarm and you're sick and tired of the same horrible sound. Maybe you wish for some nice pleasant music playing while the burglars are entering your house. Or possibly you know what you're doing and you want to save some money because in some cases a siren is cheaper than a speaker. OK, challenge accepted. Let the surgery begin. Before you start, make sure that you have a slight idea in electronics and you have all the necessary protections and of course read the user manual. Pliers. Ooh, that won't do. Bigger pliers. Knife. And finally, we get to see what we have inside. So, we have the speaker that was wired to the control circuitry. This is a very simple one, just a coil, magnet and a membrane. And of course, Years of experiments with electricity and methods made by noble scientists like Faraday, Lenz and Maxwell. The control circuitry starts with this D1. This diode is functioning as a shunt diode. It is supposed to protect the circuit from reverse polarity. At least up to 1 ampere, 1000 volt PIV. But if it is powered by 12 volt DC, like we have here, a 50 volt PID should do the trick and protect the circuit from common mistake of connecting the black wire to the red one. Well, it happens even to the best of us. How strange, there is no secret button. Well, yeah, but still, can we control it? We cannot be sure until we check the brain of the siren, the LC9806. This integrated circuit is specifically designed for generating siren sounds. Well, actually, six of them. Let's check. Ah, no, not this way. First, I will remove the magnet away from the cone and reduce the volume. Easy! Hmm. By the way, who in TME was crazy enough to record the sounds of those sirens? From the pinout, of LC9806, we see that there are two outputs of buzzer 1 and buzzer 2, SP1 and SP2 in this case, and those go to the speakers. But of course, you cannot connect it directly to the speaker, it has to go through some amplification. To do so, we can use MOSFETs. And there we have four of those in combinations with the resistors. Those MOSFETs have a good DC current gain and low noise, which is ideal to use with audio amplifiers and other audio circuit stages. The only control that we have here is probably this capacitor, here between legs 3 and 4, and for some reason upside down. Anyways, this should control the timing of the siren. When it is on, VDD high, all the six sequences are played one after the other. Later, the circuit restarts and plays it from the very beginning. As you can see, there is not much that you can do. There is no control. However, if you think differently, let us know in the comments. I mean, the only way that I see it is to cut the siren driver from the speaker and connect your own solution. Now, we need to assemble it back again, right? OK, where is my hot glue gun? Did you know that the human ear can detect only frequencies between 20 Hz to 20 kHz? So here is a sweet function for you from our generator that goes from 1 Hz, very low, up to 65 kHz. Possibly only your dogs will be able to hear it.
like it or not, make sure you subscribe. The next are coming. If you need more information, read the description below and have fun.